Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. So today we're gonna talk cover crops, um, specifically choosing the right cover crop for what you need. So let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. Second thing, I cover cover crops, cover cover crops. I cover cover crops a lot in my book, The Living Soil Handbook, um, which is on sale now, it is like out in the world. You can get it at Amazon and all those things, but preferably you'd get it from notillgrowers.com because when you buy it there, the proceeds from that sale go to making more content for you. All right, so the real thing with cover crops is that you really have to decide what your goals are with it. Do you want it as a mulch? Do you want it as a soil improver? Do you want it to just hold the place, hold your soil in place? Do you have four weeks in between one crop and the next crop that you just want something growing there um, as a placeholder? Lots of reasons to use cover crops, but not every cover crop makes sense for every situation. So I kind of want to go through each of the individual reasons that you would use a cover crop and talk about which cover crops make the most sense in that scenario. and. Also, I do not have a monopoly on all the good advice or good ideas. I always want this channel to be collaborative. So add your insight in the comments. One of the primary reasons people use cover crops is just for a mulch, a surface mulch, right? You can grow your mulch in place. Now, um, there are cover crops that work really well for that, and there are cover crops that don't work all that well for that. Generally speaking, things like um, beans, uh, mung beans, uh, soybeans, any of those, they don't make a great surface mulch. It doesn't last for a really long time. Um, things like buckwheat don't last for a very long time. They make like a very light mulch. They're very succulent, very tender, um, and they just kind of decompose really quickly. However, there are a lot of summer cover crops and winter cover crops that do make great mulches. So sorghum sudan grass, for instance, is a really good uh, winter mulch, a mulch for the winter. So if you're going into the fall and you have space that you want to plant for your fall planting, you could use something like sorghum. This isn't sorghum sudan. I keep pointing to it, but it's not. I'll talk about this in a second, but you could use something like sorghum sudan grass. Uh, it's a really great biomass above ground and below ground, creates a lot of soil organic matter, just really good extensive root systems. So you can use something like sorghum sudan grass, you grow it really tall, maybe you mow it a couple times if you have the chance, and then when it gets really tall right before frost, you can press it down, you can let it get frost or freezed, it will die, it's not a winter hardy cover crop. So something like that will create a nice mulch. You want a nice mulch going into the spring. So you would maybe use something like peas and oats that winter kill. Oats don't reliably winter kill in our region, so you may want to use something else. But something like peas and oats that grow pretty far into the fall, maybe even into the beginning of the winter, but are going to die after you get those first like hard freezes. So that creates a nice above ground biomass and below ground, but for our purposes above ground. And then it gets fro frozen, frosted enough times that the freeze-thaw cycle ends up just wearing down the cell walls of the plant and it just breaks down so it eventually dies. And it creates a nice mat and that can be, that keeps it covered over the winter, keeps the soil in place over the winter and then you can kind of rake that aside and plant into that in the spring or just plant directly into that if you're doing transplants. However, that's not a super substantial mulch. Better mulch would be something like rye, vetch, wheat, some combination of those for the spring. So you let that grow in the fall it doesn't really die over the winter time in most regions or a lot of regions and then it kind of takes off in the spring and you press that down and you kill it in one of the many ways that you can kill cover crops and i talk about crop termination in the book and then you press that down and effectively what you get is a nice mulch that lasts you know through most of the summer so in terms of mulches those are like some easy options of course there are a million ways to do this so i'll try and cover as much as i can but obviously it's a video not a book anyway and another popular reason for employing cover crops is uh, for nutrients, for nitrogen in particular. Like legumes are really good at fixing nitrogen as long as the rhizobium bacteria is present. Um, they create those little root nodules. Those are where the nitrogen is fixed because nitrogen fixation requires oxygen mitigate, like oxygen control. So these bacteria can essentially use those little nodules to control oxygen intake and outtake 
Anyway, so you can use these to gather nutrients. And they're gathering nutrients because they're photosynthesizing. So there's a nice green mat here bringing in carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water and kind of mixing that together and creating glucose. And that is feeding the soil. So it's bringing in each of these plants uh, are bringing in a variety of different microbes that gather different nutrients. So like generally, you do want to mix. It's not just the legumes. Like maybe you do want to pump some nitrogen in your soil, but you also want those other things. You also want the different microbes that gather around and the different nutrients that they can collect based on the variety of cover crops that you use. So that's anything in the legume family pretty much is gonna be a good nitrogen fixer, but buckwheat is a really interesting one too because it's not, it doesn't have this like massive root system, but it is a really good gatherer of microbes and nutrients. Um, you can also think of things like um, daikon radishes. Daikon radishes are often thought of as like a decompactor and they don't really do that. That's not, I mean, they kind of do. Studies are not really clear on whether or not they actually do much decompaction, but anyway, what they do is they they preserve nutrients. So they preserve a lot of nitrogen in the soil for the next crop in the next spring. And then there's also like allelopathic effects. This is sort of a weed management reason for using cover crops. So um, rye in particular is one, and so is sorghum, sudan grass, and others that create an allelopathic effect. Essentially, the plants are creating specific chemicals to fight off uh, weed germination. You know, often it's a specific plant like other grasses, but generally they're creating uh, these specific chemicals that are reducing growth of other plants and also reducing the germination rates of those other plants. So you can actually also use cover crops just to help with weed control and not just in the mulch, but like I said, in those chemicals. And there's also things like biofumigation. Um, this one's not super clear to me how effective it is because healthier soil is going to be less prone to disease. Um, and if you're growing a lot of cover crops, you're gonna get healthier soil that has you know, more nutrients gathered and more, you know, better tilt and more soil organic matter and all the things. But people have had some amount of success uh, reducing certain bacteria wilts and fungal diseases uh, using biofumigants. And these are um, essentially like mustard seed is one. The mustard is creating a chemical through photosynthesis, um, through the exudates that is uh, essentially reducing the impact or the presence of those diseases, of those pathogens. And I just sort of mentioned soil organic matter like passingly. Uh, soil organic matter is a big reason why you would grow cover crops. If you don't have a crop growing, you're not feeding the soil and thus you're not creating soil organic matter and you want as many plant roots as you can because roots are an extraordinarily long lasting form of carbon um, and that will help to uh, aerate your soil. It'll help to feed the microbial life. It'll help to gather nutrients. Um, so soil organic matter is a big part of that. And some, like I said, buckwheat doesn't have, for instance, doesn't have a huge um, presence in terms of soil organic matter, but it is really good for nutrients. Whereas things like sorghum sudan grass and corn, this is actually corn, I'm gonna talk about this in one second, I promise. Things like corn uh, is a really good biomass above ground and below ground. So don't think so much about what's above ground. It's really all about what's below ground. So if you've ever grown like a tray of pea microgreens, you can see how extensive those roots are. They're really phenomenal. Yeah, sunflowers, okra, these are, that's all in this mix hack here. And this is part placeholder and part soil organic matter builder because our soil organic matter here is pretty low. So once the garlic came out, uh, like a month ago, we put in a mixture of corn and soybeans from our edamame, good soybeans, okra, sunflowers, sweet alyssum, radishes, arugula. Like we want a big mixture. I think ideally they say 13 different crops. Um, I think as long as you can get a bunch in there, it's probably good. But we want, you know, a huge mixture of crops here and we wanted them to be fast growing. So things like corn are pretty fast growing in the summertime. And we wanted it to be something that could be terminated fairly easily with a flail mower. So we're gonna flail mow this. And so this will be our fall carrot patch. And just basically we do that every year where we have garlic come out and then we put something really fast growing, but like that is really substantial in, and then we mow it down and we sow our carrots. And we've done that many different ways. I've used buckwheat in the past. It's good because it's fast. But this year, yeah, we're trying a bunch of different vegetables because anything can be a cover crop. It just has to meet your goals. It has to either be that mulch or survive the winter or die in the winter. Um, it has to be easy to terminate or terminate easily under your system, right? A lot of people do roller crimping as a way of terminating and not every crop is gonna be easy to terminate that way, but you can use tarps, you can uh, mow it. A lot of them are easy to kill when you just mow it, especially the summer legumes. Those tend to be really easy. Now there's gonna be some, there's always gonna be uh, exceptions to the rule, but generally we like things that we can just mow down and then plant after. Oh, anyway, use the comment section to talk about what I missed. And also I shot this video already and it just had really poor sound. So there's a lot of things I probably said in that original video that I've forgotten in this one, but maybe I said some new stuff. So 
somebody wins along the way somewhere. Other than that, you all, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to pick up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook. Uh, like I said, the, all the termination stuff information, a lot of different stuff on cover crops is all in there. Last thing, if you enjoyed this and you're like curious about learning more about cover crops, I really recommend Managing Cover Crops Profitably. It is a SARE publication. It is free. I'll put the link down below. You can just download it. It is extraordinary. It has a ton of information and it. it is a really exceptional resource. Um, also, this video was made possible in part through a grant from Southern Sayer. So, double shout out to them. Other than that, you all, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.